Yeah. Start rupturing. Ah! Shit. <laughs> yeah. I pissed so hard, my whole fucking bladder came right out of the end. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, that. It's preposterous, but. Quite. It's really also. You ever know, like wake up in the morning and I found out a, a man's testosterone levels are highest in the morning. Um, which makes me wonder if the morning might be for that reason the best time to, to get a quick workout in. If you yeah. just wake up, you got that testosterone. Or, uh, you know what? Or even uh, those moments of like you wake up and like your partner's there and just like, oh, hey, how are you <laughs> doing? Yeah, yeah, how are you doing? <laughs> oh, that's great. Mound, chicka, wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but then what's what's less ideal is uh, when you wake up and you're just full mass and you have to pee beyond belief. Oh, yeah, that's then, like a cruel joke. Morning, morning, <laughs> peeing? That's just like, yeah, well, I don't know if there's someone out there who's mastered the art of peeing through a boner, but... Well, dude, well, okay, so I grew up out in the woods in New Brunswick, and uh, I would just fucking go right outside and pee. I wouldn't even fuck with the toilet. It's just like, no, oh, not oh, worth oh, it. Because oh, yeah. it's going to shoot out in two different directions at the same time, or it's going to just go out at a complete 45 on you. <laughs> it's just an absolute mess. It's just, I'll spend... Uh, at least the same amount of time peeing, cleaning up all the pee, because there's just no controlling it at all. And then you can't aim it properly either, because it cuts off the flow. Yeah. It's a real struggle. Yeah. yeah. Played of a man with, who's got to pee in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the tails up. But, uh, I will say, to kind of bring it back to this, of uh, some of the most some of my most favorite memories of peeing, which I think is a great way to start this conversation, are some of those moments when I've been quite a little bit liquored and I'm really starting to get high on mushrooms and my body just starts to relax for the first time and then immediately your bladder goes, oh, yeah, i got to pee. Yeah. And just like standing there peeing and just starting to grin for no particular reason whatsoever <laughs> and just like... <laughs> just kind of being like super excited to pee. <laughs> <laughs> Man, there is this. I, I I absolutely fail at describing this in in any way that could begin to invoke any kind of you know internal understanding of what it was that I experienced because I don't know why I just can't seem to explain it very well. But I was very high on mushrooms. Uh, it was my first time actually doing seven grams uh seven gram dose oh uh which i wallop which i've done a total of three times now uh and i was we were at piggy's cove me and my friend and uh the fact that we managed to not die at piggy's cove and he was high on eight grams of mushrooms yeah you know people are just bound to be complete fucking idiots and Jump in the ocean at Piggy's Cove and or please yeah. stop walking on the fucking dark rocks. You're gonna ruin it for everybody. <laughs> I know. Next thing you know, Piggy's Cove is just gonna be off limits and yeah. fuck idiots. But yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, I, I, we were just we were gonna leave at some point, and I was sitting. We were sitting in the car for a while after night had fallen, but we had a hell of a time just running around. It was winter too, so oh Jesus, there's a, yeah. we found safe ways crawling up the the rocks, and then there was just these smooth, as if they were perfectly zambonied sheets of ice that would go yeah, all the way yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. But they would like face the inland. They we weren't sliding near the ocean, of yeah. course, but. And oh my god, it was so much fun! Just it was like a crazy winter playground, sliding down those huge rocks. But anyway, so I, I finally had to pee, and I, I got out of the car, and I took my ding dong out of my pants, and it the it absolutely shocked me. I just completely forgot about having a penis somehow, and yeah. seeing it, I just it looked like this weird little boneless finger just sticking out of my groin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I was like, what? <laughs> wow. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was but, absolutely fucking... I was like a baby who found his penis for the first time or something. Yeah. And just could what not comprehend what I was looking at. And then pee starts shooting out of the thing. It's just like, bah! Yeah. How do you make Especially sense of that? <laughs> sometimes you gotta, like, you know, pull the pants. You gotta pull your, your, your boinger out with your fingers. And, well, you're really high on mushrooms. Like, the comparison between your, your <laughs> fingers and your... And your deck, man, it's really, uh, it's really quite something. But when I when I think about 
these moments of like defecating and peeing and whatnot is that I do like to while I'm like very high on mushrooms like kind of like screw with people to make them question the rules to make them look at various things maybe in a new light of like hey that turns out like that thing this guy's making fun of is very ridiculous and let's question it Hmm. but I was in the Agricola Street liquor store it was a hot summer afternoon and we were drinking in a friend's backyard and we ran out of beer and I I said I will be right back I'm gonna go get more beer and I get my shirt back on because I've been soaking up the sun and I run off to this liquor store and as I'm running there as I run by this guy who's kind of hobbling in Mm. and he kind of catches my attention and he's this very short little stubby man and he's got these white cut off jeans and Ah, this black shirt that says shift and white writing on it and he's kind of got a very like gruntish look on his face kind of I can't really quite figure out what it what it was but I'm standing there in the back and I'm starting to get a little bit of like dazed and confused looking at all the beer and like, which one do I want and this guy comes hobbling up right behind me and he opens the beer cooler door and he leans over to pick up his case off the bottom shelf And I see this thing roll down the back of his pant leg. And uh, I kind of look at it for a second. And I kind of notice that there's a Paladin security guy there. And a number of other customers who have just seen the same thing. And no one is saying anything. And it dawns on me of what that was. And I said... If no one's literally going to say anything. Someone has to say something. And I came up with the most cleverly well-constructed sentence I could think of at the time, which was, whoa, dude, you just pooped in the liquor store. (laughs) And I thought it was amazing that even though, like, I've seen people be kicked out of that liquor store for all kinds of other things, is this man was allowed to still get his case of beer and go (laughs) pay for it and leave and... I've seen people just be like, no ID, like, bad six months, like, so, like, ludicrous things like that. And I was like, that man just pooped in the liquor store in front of a whole number of <laughs> people, and you still sold them a beer. And I, I think the shift thing on his shirt was quite preposterous. It really kind of blew my mind. Oh, it's got to be the paradigm shift, you know? Like, we live in this this new era where you can just shit wherever you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just like, man, like, why am I not allowed to... Yeah. I feel I can now go I'm to that liquor impressed. store and do anything I want in that store. And, mm. like, if they tried to kick me out, I'd be like, I watched a man poop in this store and you didn't <laughs> kick him out, so listen, buddy. <laughs> yeah, listen. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is... Yeah, one thing my butthole, my questions. rules. Yeah. Yeah. Oh but, uh, my god. Yeah, I, I I just feel that like sometimes just just the right enough of like messing with people though, just to make them question things because nobody questions nobody questions saying anymore. You gotta question everything. Like, yeah. Even if it's okay to poop in a liquor store. Yeah. Well, maybe it actually is, and I was wrong. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe we should start putting a bathroom in there. Although I do feel like people be grabbing beers off the shelves maybe. and. Oh, yeah. The amount you know, yeah, of sure. empties you'd probably find in the washroom would be pretty funny. <laughs> if you was going in the town and back beers yeah. in the bathroom. No doubt. That would definitely happen. Yeah. That's cool. that's one of the least crazy things that human beings have ever done. Yeah. Although maybe... You know, pooping in a liquor store is one of the least crazy things people have done. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. considered. Yeah. Goddamn. Yeah, but... Respectively, at that yeah. moment... To me, that was that was pretty day changing. No, t- yeah, <laughs> uh, it, it definitely sh- sh- fucking shakes things up when someone yeah. pulls that move out of their ass. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I feel like I should because uh, before we took a little pee break, we uh, I was about to tell a little anecdote about this this man I worked with. Yeah, uh, at the at a temp agency, we were doing demolition work together, and um. He, uh, from what I gathered, was essentially just kind of uh, really in, wound up involved with uh, motorcycle gangs and stuff, and so eventually wound up in jail. 
for any number of things that you can imagine. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, I worked with him for like three weeks, and he seemed like he's fine. He spent the last nine years in jail in Alberta and was just back home from being released. And he was a hard worker and uh, loved his weed, and it's pretty funny. But anyways, uh, he was telling me this story about... Uh, yeah, I'm just simply trying to illustrate an example of a thing that happened, you know, obviously you could not believe it if you want, it's up to you, but this guy who was also in jail with him, um, he was, uh, basically in jail before this guy got there and is, and was still in after the fact. So I'm assuming he's still in prison, this fellow, but, mm. um, they befriended each other and just kind of hang around and, uh, it seemed like there was almost a kind of etiquette involved with not prying too much about why so and so was in there, and uh, but eventually after becoming close, you know, he's just, so what the hell did you do, anyways, man? Like, what are you in here for? You seem like an all right guy, and uh, but not that you know, like I'm, I'm sure you could, I'm sure you could easily meet a psychopath and have him come off as an all right guy at first, you know, but. The guy said, uh, well, he basically got home from work one day and the police were at his house and, uh, they arrested him right there on the spot because his wife had called the cops on him and said that he was beating her and had raped her multiple times and did all this shit. Yeah. And, uh, none of it was true according to this guy. And, um, yeah. the courts backed the woman like they would and, uh, and you know, you can make a case that they should, for sure, and, uh, but to this guy's detriment, uh, he wound up in jail for decades, and, uh, mm -hmm. he still, he never admitted to it, and he still asserts his innocence, and his wife just lied to the police, and took him for everything he was, and took his house, and the kids, and everything, and so he just, yeah. you know, was pulling up home from work one day, and, and I can't imagine the, the marriage was healthy if, if this was bubbling up to the surface the whole time right yeah. but I mean you could kind of imagine that he was just kind of on his way home from work and probably expecting a pretty casual evening whatever that meant yeah, and, yeah the uh, police are most next thing you know he's in prison prisoners. for decades yeah. and uh, that is a thing that happens too and what do you do about that I mean fuck it's just I guess the main so so what's the point I'm trying to make? Yeah. I guess it's uh yeah, I'm looking. you got to seriously take all these things as case by case instances with different individual unique human beings every time. And because yes, psychopathic men rape women and then also yes, some psychopathic woman might completely throw her husband under the bus and throw him in prison. Yeah. And uh man, it's just well, I don't know what to do about that. I mean, fuck, it's yeah. hell of a I problem. I feel like uh, perhaps maybe in this case is uh, when you kind of hear about some of these stories that happen even between, like, mob families and uh, these connections are, like, when it's good, it's good, but when it's bad, it's bad. And to drag this, like, violence and suspicion of law enforcement into there is if you're trying to raise a family in there is uh putting kids into that situation and uh if you happen to love those kids and care about them I have a vested mm. interest in seeing them raise out of that I'm sure well certainly seeing them fall into this biker gang or crime affiliate is not certainly something you wish for them yeah I mean if anyone's watched uh the Sons of Anarchy series all the way through uh, Tara, who is Jax's wife, eventually basically starts pulling shit like that. She just starts, you know, lying and deceiving and and uh, scheming behind everyone's back and uh, for, for the sake of hopefully escaping and getting her kids out of the increasingly violent situation with the gang. Yeah. Uh, and she has every justification in the world to do so. And then what, what's so interesting for me about that show in particular is that pretty much every character in the show has all the justification in the world, essentially, for everything that they do. 
and because uh, like you know Jack's in the club is basically you know the club is his whole life and the members of it are his family and he's willing to